Hey guys, so I just I want to speak on something that, uh, to be honest, and I don't know if you're the same way. Um, if you're listening to this video or if you've been subscribed for any time, you probably, you know, this is maybe not going to be anything new to you. But I, I want to just talk uh, briefly about something that, uh, to be honest, is really concerning me and, and see if you feel the same way here. Um, and it's this, that by and large, it seems like whether it's the Western church or even beyond, uh, we, we do not understand the time that we are in. If we did, um, I, I think we'd see a radically different church. But the thing that is really concerning me at the moment, guys, and I think, you know, you, you're probably sensing the Holy Spirit is concerned with the same thing, um, is that by and large, the church and Christians' lives don't look any different uh, than they have when... Uh, so, for example, uh, you know, I'm in my late 30s now. When I was younger, so teenage years and uh, even earlier than that, uh, the church by and large looks exactly the same. Um, and this is where, you know, just to give some context here, right? So we know what is going on in the moment at the moment uh, in Ukraine. Um, for the modern era, unprecedented for a nation like um, Russia... Uh, to attack a sovereign free country uh, right next to its borders in the so unprecedented in the modern era um, to, to see a nation like Russia you know that many consider many experts consider the second most powerful in the world maybe third now because China may be um, you know maybe more capable uh, militarily but so we, we see the world that well, we see that part of the world now at war, um, and you know we we see a lot of other things going on, right? So we we have economic troubles um, in in America. Things are starting to shake in Europe. The pound is getting hit big time. Um, you know, in in Australia, the the dollar is getting hit big time. Uh, we we know the troubles that that happened in Greece uh, not too long ago, the last few years, and and now. Uh, you know, even what's happening in Germany as well is getting rocked. If you don't know about that, look into it. But uh, we are seeing things on multiple levels. Uh, we, we've had COVID, we've, so we've had sickness. Uh, we have had, and that's on, that in the modern era as well, worldwide, you know, a worldwide plague is going on. We have war um, in Europe, which could quickly escalate. And guys, you know, if you're a student of history at all, you would understand how quickly these things can, um, uh, you know, devolve into ser a serious problem. Um, and even if you think that one through for a second, right? So Russia has attacked Ukraine. It's already annexing, uh, annexing, uh, you know, the, the eastern side of Ukraine. Um, and Western commentators are like, well, you know, the, Russia is losing. Well, that's an interesting perspective, seeing as Russia just took back. Um, Russia just took back uh, quite a bit of uh, what was previously the USSR. Uh, it's a funny way to say that they're, or it's an ironic take to say that they are losing and that Putin is desperate. Well, he might be desperate, but he's, he's slowly but surely taking uh, over Ukraine. Um, and, you know, how quickly that can devolve into a nightmare scenario in Europe where if Putin gets desperate enough, you know, the language he's talking about now um, is, and he's, he's actually saying, listen, I'm not, I'm not bluffing. The West keeps going, well, he bluffs and he doesn't mean what he says and it's all propaganda. Well, he looks pretty serious. Um, and I think the Western leaders and, and Western politics and culture, you know, tends to think that Russia and China are exactly like us and that, you know, they bluff and make up stuff as much as we do. And that's a whole other, um, you know, topic right there. Um, but anyway, so, so this is going on. Ru Russia, the Russia situation could devolve um, like lightning quickly. And when we're talking lightning, lightning quickly we're talking a matter of months uh maybe you know one or two years and putin for whatever reason decides to use a tactical or one or more tactical nuclear weapons um and suddenly you, you you're game on in europe suddenly um 
maybe one or, or more NATO nations say, hey, listen, that's that's all we need to see. Uh, we are we are going to war ourselves. We're not going to wait for the for the US or we're not going to wait for another country to feel like they, they need to get involved. But even at that stage, I'd, I'd say the US probably will uh, or, or that risk the US becoming involved as well. Uh, but you know those those nations going well. You know we're we're not hanging around because otherwise we're going to be next. We're going to be after Ukraine. Um, so again, this is like so thinking this logically through, right? So then you have war in Europe. You at least have, you know, like a mini world war in Europe. Maybe um, you've got all those NATO nations surrounding Ukraine, um, and so they're going to know if Russia keeps on being successful, like they are. Not that everything's going swimmingly, obviously. Like there's certain sec setbacks that Russia is having, but guys, keep your eyes on it, right? Because they're having some influence in the Baltic Sea. Uh, there's gas lines and stuff that they th that, that uh, Western nations are thinking that Russia could be uh, or could have sabotaged already. Um, there are very important internet. Um, internet connections and cables and whatever, you know, in, sorry, internet pipelines, right? That, uh, that run through, um, the ocean around the Baltic Sea and, and, and other areas, but, uh, in international waters, actually, that Russia could tamper with and that the West is now really concerned that they could do that and that could jeopardize Western, um, and, and world internet connections. Uh, and so we have a quickly devolving situation here. We have, you know, the, talk about red alert over in Europe. Uh, but it's like to circle back to how what I was saying in the beginning. It's like the church is completely unfazed. Believers are completely unfazed by this at all. We are going on like out, like a, nothing has changed. The season has not changed. The urgency has not changed. Um, to live for Christ, to lay down our lives for Christ, and our world is imploding. And this is not, you know, fear, uncertainty, and doubt, right? Which I think is just a childish thing anyway, because listen, we live in the real world, and if, you know, we're not concerned about things, then come on now, you know, let's grow up. Uh, we should be concerned about things. Um, but anyway, so, you know, th these things are going on. We've had COVID, worldwide COVID, uh, we've had the masks, we've had the, you know, the uh, vaccines to, to try and combat it. And, uh, we're, you know, that's its own subject, but I'm not going to go into that now. But, you know, we've had, we, we're having all this stuff. We're having economic troubles now. We're having tsunamis. We're having, um, sorry, tsunami, yeah, tsunamis in the last uh, few years in different parts of the world. We're having, uh, you know, I mean, natural disasters that are going off the scale. It seems like every 10 seconds, the news is like, well, this is like unprecedented for, you know, this is unprecedented. It's like, how many unprecedented can you get? Um, and so we've got natural disasters. We've got the economic troubles. We have uh, increasing war overseas by a major power in the world, Russia. We have China that is encroaching on Taiwan, that... Um, you know, is is getting serious about. I mean, it, it's plain as day, right? Like what they what they're doing already with uh, how they're threatening Taiwan, the military flyovers, the the stuff that years ago they they just you know didn't touch it, or if it did, it was like a major major news, major event, and now it's like, oh, that's just going on. Um, so you know, even to the natural observer, and especially for the believer who knows, you know, doesn't even watch the news that much. It's clear what is happening. Um, and even just quickly, you know, I mean, the Chinese vessels that are kind of, you know, getting more interested in Australia as well, off Australian coastlines. And, um, you know, all, all these things, guys, um, add up to, and I'll, and I'll say just briefly as well, guys, if, if we think that things are getting to get better, I'm sorry, but they're not. Um, the Lord has shown me in many dreams, many of his people, many, maybe, you, you know, you're listening now, the Lord has spoken to you, whether it's a word of knowledge, whether it's dream vision, whether it's through the word of God, but the Holy Spirit is clearly warning things are not going to get better and they are already pretty bad. Um, I had one dream where God was rising up to judge the earth. He was rising up as an enemy, uh, to the earth, um, Yes, with the intent that the world will repent. God loves mankind, sure. But read Romans 1. It talks about how the wrath of God um, is revealed again from heaven against all unrighteousness and ungodliness of man who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Um, 
you know, God, God is coming against the world, guy. God is rising up um, against the world. But notice as well, like he, he is, he is rising up because he wants mankind to repent. Um, and again, let's go back to the broader point here. The main point of this video is that it seems like um, Christians have no idea uh, because we are living like we've always done. The priorities of our lives speak for themselves. You go on Facebook for Instagram, social media for more than 10 seconds, and the priorities of our lives quickly become evident for all to see. Um, and, and we are living like we are on vacation. We are living like nothing has changed in the world. We are living like our lives are for, for ourselves. And when I say we and our you know, in the church. Obviously, I'm generalizing, right? It's not everyone. It's not every believer. There are plenty of godly believers out there. There are plenty that are working. There are plenty that are spreading the gospel. There are plenty of good uh, men and women, the younger generation, that are standing for Christ and know. Uh, they they are know by the Holy Spirit the time that they're in, and they're changing their lives because of it. They are laying down their life for Christ in a new way, in a greater level. Um and, but guys, there, there is something happening at the moment. I don't know whether it's probably a combination of things, right? It's speculation, but let's speculate because this matters. This topic matters. Our time matters right now. Um, the, the, you know, the deception that I think, you know, well, 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 one area is definitely deception, right? Just the enemy saying nothing's changed, nothing's wrong. Don't worry. Just live like you always did, whether it's living in sin or not even sin, guys. Not even, we don't even have to talk about, you know, outright rebellion to God, but just living selfishly, living for self. When someone like the Apostle Paul in the New Testament said that Christ died for us, that we should no longer live for ourselves, but for him who died and was raised again for us. Um, but we are living, if it's not in sin, um, we are living as though nothing has changed. We are living like the world is not different. We are living like we will have years and years and years to go that we're going to settle down uh, later on in life and retire and our retirement funds and, you know, just live as though we're on vacation and just take this boat to heaven, this like stream, this simple stream to heaven. Guys, can I say that is not going to be, that is not what the Holy Spirit is saying is coming. He continues to tell me that in one sense, these are the good old days, right? And this is, again, this is not to cause ungodly fear, but this is to cause godly fear. This is to cause, you know, when the word says stir each one another up for love and good works, this is to stir um, you, believer, uh, that that is watching this. Maybe unbeliever, if you're watching this, what do you, you know, run to Christ, run to Jesus. This is the time to be saved. Not to get on a side note here, but this is important, Right. But we, we are living like, and, and <clears throat> again, this is not to beat up on the church, right? The Lord loves his people. The Lord loves his bride. The Lord loves those that he died for. There are many good men and women, younger generation that are living for him. But, but guys, let me say, I think most of you would agree here that the church is like, living like nothing has changed. And even apart from if we're talking not, not about outright rebellion against God, they are living on vacation. We have made an art form in the West of making our religion a vacation. Uh, we have made an art form out of it. And we, we live as though our lives are just all about ourselves, enjoying ourselves, prospering. Um, you know, I don't know, just but guys, can I say the time and the season has changed? We can see that evidently now. Joe Blow down the street can see it. You know, um, your pet dog can probably see it. You know, I'm being facetious, obviously, and but I'm just I'm just meaning that we're not living as though anything has changed. We are, we are not making the gospel the priority of our lives. We are not doing that ourselves or we're doing it very little um you know one-on-one -on -one with with neighbors or friends or um you know but we we are not as well guys let me say desperate times call for desperate measures in acts 
when it was a desperate time, what did we see? We saw the Holy Spirit poured out, but we saw believers, um, not just apostles, look through the book of Acts. It was believers. It was the church that was going and being bold for the gospel. But we are not taking active measures for the gospel. We are not becoming desperate for interceding for our world. You know, we are going on. We are celebrating. We are, we are, you know, we, we are celebrating the past, what God has done in the past. We are, we are, uh, you know, uh, just sitting in a church on a Sunday morning, then just going back to our own lives, doing our own thing. Um, and the gospel is not the priority. The kingdom of God is not the priority of our lives. When I say kingdom, I mean the preaching of the good news. I mean, I mean getting together as a church and going, listen, calling for a solemn assembly like they did in the Old Testament, calling for um, mourning and weeping for the state of our world. Uh, for the state sometimes of our own lives, right? We struggle sometimes, guys, but we need to understand um, that uh, we, we need to understand that the, the hour for holiness is so important now. We need to understand that there are massive things at stake in our world now. We need to make intercession the absolute priority, not just of our own lives, appealing to God, going, God, um, change me make sure i'm in the river make sure i'm saved make sure i am safe in christ abiding in him obeying him but also for the world and for the church going god god intercede in what's going on in russia and i'm not talking politics i'm not talking about just the sure pray for the safety of ukraine sure pray for Russia, you know, the outward things are fine, and we need to we need to pray for those things that there would be peace in Ukraine, that Russia would stop going to war. Sure, we we need to pray for the safety, the physical safety of the Taiwanese, of Ukrainians, of Europe. Sure, that's good, right? But we need to pray for salvation. We need to pray that that people's eyes would be open to the truth. They'd be open to the gospel. We need to pray that pe people's ears would hear that Jesus Christ died for them, that loves them, but that they need to submit to Christ. They need to come. They need to run to him. They need to forsake a wicked way. They need to forsake their old life and take up their cross and follow him. We, we need to understand. We need to understand, okay? We need to tell the church. We need to tell other believers, not with a haughty spirit, not with condemnation, not with pride, not with arrogance, not with violence of, of spirit, attitude, or any other kind of violence. I, but we need to understand that the, the good old days of the vacation life, where we just spend our lives vacationing, we just spend our life, when I mean that, I mean just having fun. And, and actually going on vacation, just, just, you know, just living as though we are already in heaven. In, in the book of Corinthians, Paul like rebuked the Corinthians for this. And he urged me saying, listen, you are already living like kings. You are living like you're in heaven already. He's like, I wish that that was the case, that heaven was on earth already, that we were in heaven, because then I would live like you. I would rejoice with you. We would dance. We would sing. We would, you know, just have, have, we would just take everything so lightly, just have fun, just joke about everything, just not be serious, like just, you know, we, but we're not there yet, guys. We are not there yet that Christ has gained the spiritual victory, yes, but his kingdom isn't ruling and reigning on earth yet. He has not returned yet. There are people going to hell right now as I do this video. There are people going to hell. There are schools that are in a disastrous state like let me just say i've had some experience teaching the younger generation being a youth pastor being a christian high school teacher guys the young generation are in massive trouble they are being eaten alive by lgbt ideology by gender dysphoria there are young people that literally think they should be changing their gender that they should be messing with the image of god that they have been made in tragedy and despicable despair um like just not only just sinfulness, but these young generation do not realize what that leads to. Even in a very, you know, suicide rates are skyrocketing. Depression is skyrocketing. Um, young people are losing hope for their lives because they are rejecting the image of God. They are going their own way, doing their own thing. They think they know best. They, they, they despair over their sin and their hopelessness. Their sin brings them, and so they think that's an answer. And our, and our young generation, even those young people that have grown up in the church, are distressed, are demoralized, are depressed, are giving up 
almost you know just they have they are in an agony of not knowing what to do not why not knowing what is right and wrong not knowing what to believe whether the what the schools tell them um and these crazy insane demonic ideologies or or that they don't know whether to believe that or to believe christ and so there's a whole young generation that are getting eaten alive by this uh there is there i mean Our lives are not changing. The, the church is not paying attention to what is going on, by and large, okay? And I know, again, I'm speaking in general generalities. But come on now. Like, for all that we are doing, okay, and all that we are not, for all that we are doing, our society is spiraling at an incredible rate. Our society, except for a few bright spots, right? The overturning of abortion was massive in America. That is praise god for that you know in another video i was talking about not having a wrong influence on government that there are some amazingly good influences on government as well that are and if that's the result then that is godly and that is good and the fruit speaks for itself when the influence is right and done in a godly way so awesome that's a bright spot but that's a bright spot guys um in a world that is devolving into chaos i mean even recently the pope met with a bunch of other you know i don't know world leaders and religious leaders you can look it up um but i think it was even at the un okay um correct me if i'm wrong in the comments but i think it was at the un and so you know and he's talking about like world peace he's talking about you know um or he's, he's what he's there for and you've probably seen this online as well right in the last few years the, 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 the they've come out with you know an agenda for peace and i think that was a un thing an agenda for peace and then the pope is propagating this stuff as well and thinking that we can join christianity can join with other religions like islam um uh, 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 you know, just other religions of the world. I can't remember. There's two in particular as well, uh, but I, I can't remember. Oh, yeah, so Catholicism and Christianity and Islam and ABC, other religions of the world. They're all the same. There's only one way to God. Even even when Jesus said, um, "He is the He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through Him." And yet here we are. You have the Pope, and you have the you have the um, you know UN, uh, even you know starting to talk like this which we know as believers leads to what it leads to the antichrist it leads to a one world government it leads to the mark of the beast it, we are racing towards the end um prince charles as well he gave a speech recently as well where he touched on this he's talking about environmentalism and then he starts talking about this this he who he doesn't name um but we need this this he this like world ruler um and and we need to give him trillions of dollars to um enact like a i don't know how he termed it it was something like a militaristic an economic militaristic campaign that uh, will bring like a new age or something look, look up the language i might be you know i'm paraphrasing obviously but look up this speech i'm talking about online and there's a there's a there's a part of it where you listen to that thing and correct me if i'm wrong but to me it certainly sounds like and to many others as well that have commented on this on this uh, subject online that it's clear what prince charles is talking about if it's not an antichrist figure it's the antichrist figure he's talking about or he's wanting a figure like that to rise up well that's what thessalonians talks about how the spirit that now works in the sons of disobedience uh, that that's that's demonic okay that that's the spirit that's what it says in thessalonians that the spirit who is now at work in the sons of disobedience is working to bring you know christ is working one day to bring his kingdom upon the earth right well the enemy is trying to do the same thing um and he's doing it spiritually but he also is wanting to cause as much chaos um and and try and set up as much of his own kingdom upon this earth um and it's going to manifest uh, one day as the Antichrist. So, guys, these things are happening, right? These things are happening. And we are living like the sun is shining, like nothing has changed. And and we are just having the time of our lives. The churches that are just doing social clubs and, uh, you know, teas and, and just like, again, not wanting to disparage the church, right? Because relationship is good. There's an element where gathering together as the church i mean obviously gathering together as the church to encourage one another in the faith is good and right and and yes 
Amen to that. Let's encourage one another more as the day approaches. But we, we've done something, guys, where suddenly most of the reason why the church, if it ever gets, well, when it does get together, apart from a Sunday morning, we're doing it to have fun. We're doing it to just have a social time and a social club. And guys, there should be something in us, honestly, that looks at the book of Acts and weeps for what we as a church are doing, but also what we are not doing. We are not taking the time seriously right now. If we were, we would be, our whole churches would be calling solemn assemblies. We would be calling for intercession. We would be calling to, calling us to mourn over the state of the church, over the state of our own lives sometimes in repentance and reformation and a call for revival and a great awakening. And I'm not talking about golden teeth and, and glitter from heaven. I'm talking about holiness in the heart. I'm talking about a right life before Christ. I'm talking about laying down our lives for the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm, I'm talking about getting real with him in a way that, that in the West, we have not done by and large. We have lived for ourselves. We have not lived for him. And the result of it, guys, okay, Let's 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 have a godly, humble rebuke of ourselves, myself included, right? I'm not saying I'm I'm better than anyone. I've been in this boat and you know, I'm a human too, and I'm I've failed as well. And I've said, Lord, I have I have not done what I should or done what I shouldn't. I'm in that boat as well. We all are, right? But like what are we doing? What are we doing? We we have had we have, you know, this is a time for humble rebuke of ourselves. This is a time for contrition. This is a time for repentance. And yet we are rejoicing. We, we are just celebrating. We are just acting like nothing is wrong. We're having the time of our lives. We are, we have made Christianity a vacation. We, we have made it a, a shameful thing, a shameful thing when our societies, our neighbors, our friends are going to hell. I, I, whole nations are div you know, devolving into darkness and now war and now economic trouble. And we do not understand that we have a mighty God that is trying to wake up our world, COVID, war, economic trouble, sickness. God is trying to wake us up, guys. And let me tell you from what God has shown me in dreams and in visions, this is not going to get better until we have a world, even where we have a church, which is getting on our knees and going, God, forgive us. God, we repent and turn to Christ with all our hearts and all our lives. It is not going to get better. It is going to get worse and worse and worse. From the time of this video onwards, I can guarantee you within the next few years, we will look back at this video, okay? You watching this right now, maybe this is a few years after, you look at the date of this video, maybe you're watching this a few years after. Well, at the moment, we just have Russia in Ukraine, okay? We, we have that isolated thing. Um, I could guarantee you virtually, okay? I don't know, only the Lord knows, but I can guarantee you that conflict escalates tenfold. Um, I can guarantee you that well, not here. Um, economic troubles. We think it's bad now, guys. Well, strap yourself in because, uh, you know, this is not fatalistic, but this is from a ho the Holy Spirit. And this is from God who is warning us that things are going to get worse at a lightning speed. I've seen that in dreams, guys, where the darkness on the horizon suddenly became the darkness all around. Um, and we should be like Esther as the believers in Christ. We should be like Esther who the scripture says she could not bear to see the destruction of her own people. Guys, could you, could you, I don't know how to put this, but could you bear to see the destruction of America, of Australia? Could you bear to see the destruction of, or of, of mass destruction in Europe, um, of your own nation? Or could you bear to see the destruction of God's people, of his church ruined and wrecked, at least the present outward, you know, the, the lives that would be lost? Could you bear to see that? Well, if not, what are you doing? Believer, I say this in love. I say this to myself as well, right? What are we doing? What are we doing? The old believers used to speak of their faith and of going with the gospel as something like it was like a, a an, you know, like the book of Joel, right? Like an army. Um, and I'm not talking military, right? I'm not talking about violence. I'm not talking anything like that. I'm talking about 
believers that are so full of love, of, of the joy of the Holy Spirit, of the love of God and the love for people that they go out and they plead with people to be saved. Guys, this is what we should be doing. And yet we are playing church. We are deceiving ourselves. We go into church on a Sunday morning and thinking we are right with God and living like hell for the rest of the week. We are doing these things, guys. And we are, we are living like this world is for us, like we, we're already in heaven. Shame on us. Shame on us. I hope you can hear that, guys. I know how that sounds, but come on now. Let's let's stir one another up to love and good works. And 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 you know, the Bible tells us that we all need a, a loving rebuke at times. We need to be real with ourselves and where we are at because the days are evil, the time is short, and what are we doing? We're still just meeting in rooms. We're still just making ourselves as comfortable as we can. We're still doing the same things we've always done, and we're still not doing all the things we should be doing okay this is not a condemnation guys and this is we don't live like we have to fulfill laws okay in the sense that you know we're not under the old covenant law so i'm not going into that realm right i'm not talking about that but i'm saying okay for the apostles and for the believers and for christ who lived their life for jesus who gave every everything you know the full measure of devotion of their lives um what are we doing? What are we doing? Come on now, let's get bold. Let's go. Let's do more than we've done before. Let's get together as the church. Let's be trained and equipped, sure. But man, a live, a five-year-old knows the gospel. And we're, we're talking about we need another four years until we're going to go out and go together and, uh, and, and preach the gospel together, share the gospel, hand out tracts. Um, Come on now, let's get outside of our four walls. Let's get outside of our comfortable meeting rooms. Come on, let's do it. Okay, this is urgent now. Our societies are failing and they're getting worse and worse and worse. And we're trying to approach it in a political way. And we're trying to approach it in completely the wrong way. The way that Christ chose, that the apostles showed and that the early church showed was to to share the gospel, to become bolder than we ever have before. Do it with others. Let's do it as our whole churches. But our churches are resting. We are vacationing. We are doing what's comfortable and easy for us. And we are wondering why everything is going down the, the drain. And we are blaming, you know, we, we're blaming individuals. We're blaming leaders or we're blaming this program or that program or we don't have enough lighting or I want to change the music on a Sunday morning. I want to change the chairs. Who cares about any of that? That is ridiculous. Guys, 10 years from now, we're not going to be caring about the lighting in our churches and what kind of songs we sing. We're going to care because there'll be such persecution um, against the church. We are going to care because there is such war that has come to our lands that we are going to be weeping for our children. We are going to be weeping that there's not even enough believers to get together together to share the gospel, to, to be encouraged in Christ, there's going to be death. There's going to be destruction on an impar in, in, what do you call it? an unparalleled level, guys, from what God has shown me, from what God has shown many other Christians. We have entered a desperate time, and we must get desperate. Desperate times call for desperate measures. I pray you would understand the spirit that I'm saying this, guys, but we must get serious because there are such great things that are at stake, and we are playing games. We are playing games. We are playing games. We are we are mistreating each other in the body of Christ. We we are playing for positions of power. We are jealous against one another. We are we are in sin, and and we are we are playing games. We are acting like mere children. Um, but the Apostle Paul said like that, you know, when, when we play, when we fight against each other, we are playing games. And it's it's a shameful state that we are in as the body of Christ. When we should be a mighty army for the gospel, we should be risking our lives. We should we don't even risk our lives in the West when we go and preach the gospel. You do that in Iran, Iran and you risk your life. Here, you do it and the worst you get is a frown. The worst you get is someone saying you're crazy. Who cares? Who cares what people think about us? We are coming to a time, guys, where we will see greater play. We will see economic disaster. We will see famine in the land. We will see tsunamis. We will see the heavens shaken. We will see disastrous things coming upon this planet, upon our nations. Okay, And the last thing we'll care about is politics then. The last thing we'll care about is having our next vacation then. The last thing we'll care about is what we're going to put on Facebook tomorrow. Okay, let's get desperate. We want revival. Well, let's repent. We want a great awakening. It starts with us. What are we going to do to submit ourselves to Christ? What are we going to do to live for him? 
What are we going to do now, guys? We need to live for him like we have never lived for him before. We need to draw close to him while he is near. We need to give up our lives for him. Okay, I'm talking about laying down our lives like we have never done before by being active for him and by for, for Jesus Christ who lived for for live, live for us, who died for us, who was tortured for us, who gave everything for us, who an early church by and large as well did that for, so we could have church on a Sunday. But more than that, guys, so that we could live for him. So, guys, now is the time. Now is the hour. Now is the day. There is not tomorrow. The Bible says, don't say to yourself, tomorrow I'll go here and do this and do that. You do not know what your life holds tomorrow. You don't even know if there'll be a tomorrow, guys. Today is what we have, okay? So pray to God first, all right? Seek him. Say, Lord, spend a few weeks, a few days, but get serious with God. Pray to him. Seek his will. What would you have me do, Lord? And like Paul then, the Holy Spirit will put in your heart what to do. It doesn't always look the same as everyone else doing the same thing. Understandable, right? That's that's not what I'm talking about. But at the same time, we have been called. Jesus has given us a great commission, a great gospel. Let's stop talking about it. Let's do it. Let's stop all our hobbies. All that, no, like hobbies are not wrong. I'm not... I'm not censuring anything. Like, get my heart here, guys, right? There's, we have freedom in Christ. To, 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 We have freedom, right? But at the same time, okay, let's get serious about our time. This is not a time for hobbies and vacations and doing everything we want and having the time of our lives. This is the time for the gospel. If we do not go now, there is so much at stake, guys. In the Spirit, the last couple of weeks, the Holy Spirit has told me, if we do not get more serious now, we cannot imagine the things that are at stake stake in the days, in the weeks, in the months, in the years to come, even if this is 10 years away we, or 20 years away, but I can guarantee you it's not from what the Holy Spirit is saying, but we have no idea, no idea what is going to happen uh, if we do not get serious now and we do not take the time uh, to, to go now. So can I plead with you? Can I urge you? You know, Stop being entertained by everything in the world. Stop just being obsessed by YouTube and Facebook and just being entertained. Let's get serious. Let's grow up. Let's go now. It doesn't matter if you're 10 years old or 80. Let's go. We need every man on board, every, every, every man on board. There's no excuse, okay? The Holy Spirit will light you up. There are people that have gone to their graves preaching the gospel. There are people going to, gone to their graves 80, 90 years old that are out there doing things for Christ, not just to do things for Christ, but, you know, they are interceding in prayer. They are... Uh, my mum has a friend who is an absolute firecracker when it comes to interceding, and she's been sick recently, uh, but but she is an absolute firecracker in prayer. Like, she goes for it. She puts some of us younger, probably myself as well, to shame in, in how she is interceding for her area in Australia, interceding for Australia, um, and, and so, you know, uh, but I tell you what, guys, I mean, yeah, and, and let me say, there's some older crew that put the younger generation, even myself, to absolute shame when it comes to living for Christ. How they love others, how they serve others, how they serve his people and his church, um, and how that, how they, like, how they pray. Oh my goodness, they are remarkable and, and have blown me away, honestly, the older generation. Um, but guys, whether you're 10 years old, you know the gospel, whether you're 20, you know the gospel that Jesus Christ died, was raised to life again, now lives, um, for lives that, to, uh, uh, to intercede for our world and, and, and believers, but now he rules and reigns in the heavens, but he longs to see people be reconciled to his father. We know the gospel. We know it. The Holy Spirit will be with us with whatever we do, right? We see that all through Acts. Don't don't feel like you have to be an expert before you go. You'll never be an expert in the way that the world thinks you need to be or the way that even in your mind you think you need to be. But come on now, like... You don't need to be an expert. The gospel is real simple, okay? And trust the Holy Spirit that he'll give you what you need. Um, but let's go. Let's get Let's get real. Let's go. Let's do something for Christ. This is a video. And if you don't remember anything else, okay, it's time to go. It's time to go. Stop listening to every sermon under the sun until you're blue in the face. Stop debating everything until you're blue in the face. Do something for Christ. Do something. Okay, we have become so good as a church at knowing the Bible till it's inside out and back to front. And even when we know everything, we want to keep on knowing and knowing and knowing and knowing. And Paul Washer, you should know who that is. If you don't, look up Paul Washer, mate. What a preacher. He's like, 
there was a time where he was just like, I don't just want to know, all right? I want to change, change personally, and then I want to go. I want to go for Jesus Christ. Let's go, let's go. I know I'm repeating the same thing, guys, but let's wake up. Let's rouse ourselves. Let's stir up the body of Christ in love, but with urgency, with passion, okay? We need to change. We need to do things differently than we did before. Not everything differently. Let's keep preaching the word. Let's keep encouraging one another in the word. Let's worship. Let's let's praise the Lord. Sure, let's, let's keep meeting together to build relationship. Let's do all that good stuff. But come on now, let's, let's go, let's go. Let's stop living like the West, like it's just a big one big holiday and we should just live for ourselves and have the time of our life and, and settle down like we're already in eternity and we're already in heaven. We're not there yet. We will be one day when Christ rules and reigns. When we're with him, we will be there one day. We can rest from our labors then, but not yet, not now, okay? The rest is not now. We think we should just have times of refreshing and, and rest now and let's just, let's just, or let's just buckle down for the apocalypse. Let's let apocalypse. Let's give up. Let's bunker down. Let's just, you know, just go, oh, how bad is the world? That's as that's as bad as not going. That's as bad. That's not doing anything as well. That's just, okay, you recognize the, sign, the signs of the times. What are you doing? What are you doing in response? So anyway, guys, I know this has been an urgent um, message. I pray you get it, the, the spirit that I'm giving it in as well right? That this is just, this is so urgent that I'm speaking urgently, right? This is, this is what I feel of the Holy Spirit. And so I'm trying to communicate um, what the Spirit is communicating to me and is communicating to many others and no doubt yourself as well. The urgency of our hour. Let's get urgent. Let's get urgent. If we do, maybe there is some hope. Maybe, maybe there, we, there could be more time until um, end time things get incredibly worse. Maybe, but we need a great awakening. We need an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. We need to act like we are desperate, like a war is already on our shores. We need to act like things are already uh, you know, we, we need to act like we're 10, 20 years in the future where, um, you know, we, we need to act like our lives depend on it because as the great Paul Washer says, they do, they do and our lives, not just for eternity, but our lives right now. If Jesus said it, those that try and save their lives will lose them. Notice that those that try and save their lives, who try and just have the greatest time and just everything's for them and wonderful all the time. And, you know, just... They'll lose their lives, but those that lose their life for my sake will find them, will gain them. In other words, will keep them, okay? So now is the time to give your life up for Christ if you want to keep it. If you want to keep it, if you want to have a, if you want to have joy in the future, if you want to live in a world that still has peace, that still um, is, okay, is okay, by and large... Let's give up our lives for Christ. We must, we must lay down our life for Christ. We must by serving him, by interceding, by taking the time seriously, just like Esther did. And she's like, if I don't act, that was one person, but she's like, if I don't act, um, maybe, maybe we are lost. Maybe the nation of Israel is lost. We should be like Esther now, guys. We should be interceding for our world. We should be saying, God, have mercy on this world. Have mercy on Ukraine, on Russia, on China. Uh, Lord, intervene in the ins in the insanity of Russia to go to war. War is insane. God never intended us to go to war. Jesus said, "Love your enemies, pray for those that persecute you." Jesus did not create humanity to, humanity to go to war. One man destroying another man who is made in God's image and who has been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Um, what a despicable act war is. Okay, but that's another subject anyway. But just to say, guys, we get the point. I'm going to end it here because it's been a while now. But come on now, let's get serious. Read your Bible, pray, love one another, forgive one another if any has a grievance against another, the Bible says. Okay, go on the great commission you were given. Okay, we talk about the great commission a lot. Are you doing it? Are you doing it? Are you doing it? Okay, the Bible says, go into all the world and preach the gospel, not just make disciples. We love the make disciples one. Okay, that's good. That's godly. We need to make disciples. Okay, but we, we intentionally or unintentionally, and I think it's both a lot of the time, we skip over the part where the Great Commission is also go and preach the gospel to all creation. Go and share this good news to all creation. Shine your light on a hill, uh, on, a, on a roof, you know, on a hill. Shine your light on a hill. Okay, uh, from the rooftops. 
um, or lift your voice up from the rooftops, okay, uh, for the sake of this gospel. And yet we, we because of fear, because of cowardice, uh, because we love our own lives, we pass over that. But anyway, enough of that. Let me end on an encouraging note. God loves you, okay? If you're a believer, God loves you. He is working in your life, okay? He loves you. He forgives you, okay? Uh, but know that the time has changed, the season has changed, and as believers, it starts with us. Let's not start just, you know, let's not start um, just going, oh, it's someone else's problem or it's, it's just the church's problem. No, well, we are the church. I am the church. You are the church if you're a believer. It's it's our problem. It's our thing. <laughs> um, we, we're not going, oh, we're better than anyone else or we've done better than anyone else. Look, forget that, okay? Like Daniel, we should be coming to God and weeping for our own state. Sometimes it has been our own state, weeping for the church, weeping for our world and going, God, inter intervene, have mercy, in um, have grace upon our world. Forgive us, God. We have sinned. We have fallen short. We have got it terribly wrong. God, have mercy on us us have mercy on us uh we we need to do it guys because that's the time we are in we are racing towards the end we are racing to things we can hardly imagine now so we must act now we must intercede we must go now we must change we must change we must change we must change our approach as a church we must change it individually um, the time has changed. We must be soldiers for Jesus Christ, soldiers in the spiritual sense, right? We must be interceding in, what I mean by that is we must be interceding in prayer. We must love like we've never loved before. We must forgive and we must share the good news that Jesus Christ died for men. Um, that is the only hope of humanity is the gospel. The only hope that we have, we could have everything else seemingly by appearances going really well. If we do not have the gospel, if people are not washed by the blood of the lamb, it matters little really in the end nothing at all because people will die and go to hell if they don't have him so god bless you um let's go let's take this seriously um anyway god bless you and uh let's stir one another up let's stir each, ourselves up to this time that we're in um and to live for christ like we have never and serve him and share the gospel like we have never done before let's go let's do it we can do it god is with you he goes before you be bold and courageous we quote, quote that scripture all the time that was said to joshua you know be bold and courageous courageous don't be dismayed well are we being bold and courageous or, or do we just talk courageously online and and to each other and yet don't do anything we deceive ourselves like we're going we're looking in the mirror and going oh look how bold we are and courageous and look at you know look at all we're doing for christ and it's just a delusion it's just our imagination we're not actually doing anything we're not actually doing anything or we're saying one day we'll do it one day we'll do something really one day well well the bible says we're not even guaranteed tomorrow let's do it today let's do it while we have breath in our lungs um let's let's do it while we have the promise or, or the hope of today um that only christ gives us but um let's make the most of the time we have now so god bless you but let's go let's get serious like we've never done before let's challenge ourselves to get out of the boat to walk on the water and and to be desperate for our world and desperate for our church in love and in intercession um and in an urgency to do what we to, to change our approach, to change our approach in a, in a huge way. Keep the things that are good, but change what is not good um, and, and add to what we are not doing already that we should be doing and we know we should be doing it, but we avoid it and we find ways to avoid it. And even then we find ways to say we're doing it and we're not, we're not, we're just talking about it. No, we just hope we'll do it one day and never do it. So anyway, read the signs of the times, the age that we're in, the day that we're in right now, it's going to get lightning it's going to get worse in a lightning fashion. Um, moment by moment, it's going to seem like every year it will get worse unless we change and unless we take this seriously right now. Um, so God bless you guys um, until, and, until uh, the next video. See you then.